Hello everyone, welcome to another video. My name is Philip. I'm also known as PS RPS Enough. Today we are going to talk about books and specifically this book, uh, Chapter House Dune from Frank Herbert. Uh, this is the sixth volume on the Dune series written by Frank Herbert late in the 80s, I believe. Um, and they are classic of science fiction. That's why I picked them up. Uh, I wanted to uh, get myself familiarized with, with the classic Dunes. Um, this is the final that Frank Herbert wrote. There are more books in the Dune series, but they were written by his son, Brian and Kevin Anderson. I heard a lot of bad reviews on those, uh, on those other books, like that they were not really faithful on, on, uh, the storyline created by Frank Herbert and that they are not as well written. So I, I'm unsure if I will read the other books or not, um, so, what do I have to say about Frank Herbert's Chapter House Dune? Uh, does it close the whole storyline? No, it leaves a lot of questions open, especially the ending. Uh, a lot of things that I wasn't expecting, I don't want to give too much spoilers, so I will avoid uh, mentioning that. Um, but there were a lot of things that I weren't expecting. The ending was particularly interesting. Uh, a lot of twists and turnarounds, or well, a few, not not extremely a lot. But it was uh, very interesting to see all the build-up leading to that point. And there were still things that I did not see coming before they actually happened. So very well written from, uh, from Frank Herbert. I really enjoyed uh, this book. Uh, it was... Nice to have a follow-up to the previous one. Uh, nice to keep up the with the story, the whole storyline behind this uh, world. Uh, it brought a lot of insight to the Ben uh, Ben uh, Ben Gesserit. I don't know if this is how you're supposed to pronounce it. Ben Gesserit, um, child of the Reverend Mothers. They. This book is a lot more focused on the Reverend Mothers than the previous books were. Um, and I it was interesting to get to know them a bit more, the diversity between them, what they think are good characteristics, what they think they are bad characteristics, um, how they show themselves. I, I feel like there was some sort of evolution as well from the previous uh, Ben uh, Gesserits in terms of... Previously, they were always portrayed as these beings that were purely, purely about um, a logic or their own their own ideals, and they were shining out completely all emotion. Um, and on these books, you see some twerks that you might think that it they're not as strict as previously portrayed. It. Uh, but it's still very strong characters. All of them have very interesting personalities. They're quite different. It's not uh, the original idea that you had from the previous books where you thought that all of the Reverend Mothers all had this fixed way of being. Um, it also connects very well to the whole Atreides uh, bloodline and the importance of it and the importance that uh, the, the, the tyrant uh, Leto II uh, saw in them that he allowed them to survive after all <coughs> them and uh, the Tleilaxu and the Ixians and uh, he, he allowed the scattering to happen and have some certain uh, follow-ups uh, very interesting what they did with with Gola with Duncan Idaho still playing a part uh, I really liked that and um he he has a very strong part throughout the book, even though he's very contained, not the Duncan Idol that we see on the other books, uh, but you still see a lot of interesting references. He also seemed like a different Duncan Idaho, even though he has the memories of all the previous Duncans, he didn't seem to be like the, the, the same kind of person that he was on the other books. He was more... But you can explain that by the fact that he was more contained and um, conditioned, in some way, um, even somewhat imprinted. Um, what else is there to say? I, I like what they do did with uh, Miles Tag. They managed to bring Miles Tag back. It wasn't the Miles Tag that I was expecting. Um, I was very surprised on the previous uh, uh, book from Dune. 
the ending and the changes that happened with uh, Miles Stegg's character. I was very surprised that he died at the end of the book as well, after all the changes that he had been through. And... And the focus that was put on that character. And on this one, they bring him back as a Gola. And uh, they awaken him. So he's the Bashar, the, the military genius once again. But you don't see those previous things come into full play. You see some glimpses of what Malstag was capable of. But he's just like an afterthought in the entire book. He's not... He doesn't play as a strong role as you would expect if you had read the previous book, which is curious. It feels like it, this book strays away from the Atreides' main bloodline and it gives it another another touch, even though the main character, which is pretty much Odrade, the, the, the reverend mother, uh, she is uh, Atreides by bloodline, and I, I believe Shiana is also Atreides by bloodline, and Shiana plays an interesting part in the book as well, um, and the whole lore behind Dune and how the connection with the sandworms, how they are trying to bring the sandworms back. She has a very interesting insight uh, onto that side of things. But I still felt that Miles as an Atreides, he could have been better explored, especially with all those those changes that happened to him during the previous book. Um, so yeah, also interesting was the, the, the Tleilaxu part, uh, Sea Tail was captured as one of the master Tleilaxus on the previous book, and he remains accessible throughout this book to the Ben Gesserit, and apparently all the other Tleilaxus have uh, been killed by the Honored Matchers or by the Face Dancers, it's not really very well explained or I didn't really understand it and this seems to be one of the the last master Tleilaxu left alive and uh, he's used as a trade-off because the, the Ben Gesserit did want to take some secrets away from him um, if you recall on the previous book they had some sort of partnership going on but they still distrust a little bit uh, of each other so uh, it's interesting to see that play out, but in the end, he, he seems to play a role a bit similar to Miles Stagg. It seems like he was a secondary character and not really part of the driving force behind the book, which you would assume when you're halfway through the book that he will play a strong part all the way to the end. But um, that's not entirely the case. I, I don't want to spoil the end for you guys, so I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, just mentioned that I enjoyed it. It left some things open and I can understand why people are interested in uh, uh, picking up the, the follow-up books and try to wrap around the the um, the, the whole storyline, try, try to close it down. But uh, frankly, from the reviews that I've seen of the other books, I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to... Uh, Leave it at these six books, the original version uh, or vision of Frank Herbert. And because uh, I mean, some people say that the problem is that you don't really understand who is the final enemy behind the whole thing. The enemy that made the 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 honored matrons come back from from the scattering and uh, take over the old empire, as, uh, as, as some people call it. Um, and that seems to be like the big enemy that is blooming. And uh, some people say that this is related back to the Butlerian, Butlerian Yihad, and with the rise of machines or something like that, and that the enemies are indeed machines in the end. And that also connects um, something with the X Ixians that are still around but it, it didn't feel like that it felt like it was something else in the end it felt like it was uh, another thing that I don't want to spoil you guys but I think if, when you read the, the final chapters you, you get a different you get a different uh, vibe from that and that was one of the main critics uh, from the several reviews that I read on the different books uh, about this is that um, it seems that Brian Herbert and uh, Kevin Anderson didn't quite follow that and just started making up uh, things. They made prequels 
to explore is explain how the different houses came to be and the Butlerian jihad and they created some new elements there and then when they made to when they came to do the sequel they referenced to those uh, books that they themselves created instead of referencing to the explicit material from Frank Herbert himself. So uh, it's very doubtful. I don't think I want to get into those books. They have a lot lower reviews than uh, the D6. I think I'm happy with where this book uh, left me. I'm left wondering what happened uh, with with the entire um, Ben, G- ben Gesserit versus Honored Matures situation. Um, I think I have some ideas of what could have happened, but would have been nice to have a follow-up to explain that properly. But unfortunately, the main author is dead, and I don't quite trust the work uh, of these other people who uh, try to pick up on that. So uh, we'll have to see. Anyways, it seems that there's like a movie or a series about to come out, so maybe that will be interesting to check out. And um don't know. I don't know. So that's it. Let me know what you guys think about the book. If you have read it already, if you haven't read it, uh, let me know in your comments below. And uh, that's it for now. Hope you guys are having a great day so far and keep having one. See you next time. Bye-bye, everyone. Take care.